Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is the Be Better Golf channel, and I'm in Superstition Mountain, Arizona, is that right? That's right. And with Mike Malaska. Mike has his own YouTube channel you should subscribe to. How do, what is the, the name of your channel? It's just Malaska Golf, just Mike Malaska on YouTube. The link is right there in the description below. So uh, today we are going to be answering your questions and my questions about uh, the way Mike teaches. Mike, th tell us a little bit about your history in golf. When did you even start playing? Well, I started playing when I was about 15, 16 years old. I was a mm -hmm. baseball player. Yep. Played all other sports and I picked golf up and I made some some assumptions about the change from baseball that were good and mm -hmm. I, I, I had some concepts that worked. Yep. And in a very short period of time, in a couple of years, I won our state open and I was a college All American. Mm -hmm. I only played for like two and a half, three years. Yep. Uh, so yep. that's kind of where I right. started. So this is where your story is really interesting to me because as just a natural athlete growing up playing all other sports, just like being a kid, you got into golf and you got to very, very high level of it. And then you got into some more of the technical aspects of golf and did all that technical stuff you were getting to did it help your game more or did your game start to deteriorate? Oh, it, it train wrecked. I mean, I, yeah. I went, I went within six months, mm -hmm. I went from mm -hmm. couldn't see how you would shoot over par to I wasn't quite sure if I could break 75 on a consistent basis. Right. So the, the, the confusion factor and a lot, there's a lot of reasons why that happened yeah. is kind of why I'm here today because it's been a lifetime search for, or an understanding of what did I have when I was 17 that yeah. made the game so easy yeah. and why did it get so difficult? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I mean, we're even here today. But I think a lot of the, the, so the audience that watches Be Better Golf Channel and we have one of our subscribers helping today uh, is they are the probably the most obsessed golf obsessed audience there is you know they, these they're very knowledgeable about all these different technical things but by and large there are people who have really been trying very hard they're up late looking at youtube videos trying to figure you know right. the next thing that's going to help them but they feel like they've plateaued so with you you feel like you're doing everything you can just to get back to that more natural athletic state that you had early on well yeah i mean Athletics are athletics. Hitting mm -hmm. a ball is hitting a ball. And what you're really doing, you, one of the biggest reasons that you're all confused is because you really can't see a golf swing. If, if there's no, one thing I've learned in 45 years of doing this, yeah. you cannot see a swing. A swing's invisible. What you're seeing are effects. Okay. So, yeah. so what people are trying to, our industry mm -hmm. has become an effect driven industry. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that the pictures aren't right, it's not that the numbers aren't right, but the way you create those numbers is very different than what the, what the pictures or the numbers would allude to. Yeah, I know a guy, a friend of mine, won the World Long Drive Championship in 2014. And this year they were doing a swing analysis of his swing. Uh -huh. And they were so excited by how hard his lower body works. And uh, I know for a fact that He's not trying to move his lower body. So everyone watching the slow motion recap of his swing would go out to the tee and say, I want to kill it. I'm going to use my lower body like that. Well, but, and that's one of the yeah. biggest misconceptions in the game. And I fell into that trap too. That was one of the first traps that I fell mm -hmm. into. And it's not that your lower body doesn't move, but how your body and how it actually moves is an effect. Okay. So you can force yourself to turn yeah. or you can allow yourself to turn in a whole different way. Now, they're going to end up looking very similar, but the forces that you use in your body and what you're doing relative to where it's hurting you or making it hard to square the club yeah. face are totally freaking different. Okay, okay. So let's get into uh, the interview there. Okay. So, oh, actually, no, we're not done with your life story. Okay. So now you're, st now you're playing at a high level again, and you, you've, uh, you're still playing golf competitively. Well, yeah, I, my whole my whole career has been taking lessons, trying to work on it. I got hurt, herniated two discs in my lower back, mm -hmm. one in my neck. As a result of poor as technique? Re exactly. You as a result. So. Yeah. No, there's no question. no question. Now that I know yeah. the physiology of it, I know that how these forces work. There's now no I other option than to get a hurt back if you're, you were going to swing like that. You're going down. Yeah. Because your body is designed to work a certain way, and when you create force, forces come back at you, your body has certain ways to handle those forces or a braking system. If you violate that, you may create more speed, but long term your body's going to break down, which is what happened to me. Okay. You know, so then I went on this quest of, okay, taking all these lessons, working with them, I kept hearing, I'd go to one person, they'd say one thing, the next guy said a total different. Yep. So you start getting into all this. So I started to read books and I did my own little 
uh, deal. I've read about 40 books and I put philosophy of the game, grip, posture, aim, ball position, top of the swing, transition. Yep. And then I put the similarities with who, when they had constants. And then I started working well, on the constants. lines, yeah. So what everybody had in that, that they all agreed on were the things I started to work on. Yep. And that started to help me. Mm -hmm. Then I got involved in the physiology of it. That helped me even more because then I started to understand how the body actually generates speed and force. Mm -hmm. And then I got a bunch into the neurology and how your brain works and what your brain is, which is a taskmaster. And what you tell it, then it starts eliminating or creating things relative to the task. Yep. And then I got into the physics, so I started understanding the physics of how things move. And pretty soon it became evident what needed to happen to be consistent mm -hmm. relative to hitting a golf ball, the physics of it, the physiology of it. And so it's made it a lot easier for me to play. And I'm yeah. playing, I'm probably, ball striking wise, I'm almost as good now as I was when I was 18. <laughs> What a Which long is, circle to get back to. Yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm significantly better than I was through my whole career playing U.S. Opens and tour events and mini tours. I'm a lot better ball striker right now. I have a lot more control right now with a lot less practice than I did through my whole career because of what I understand. So at some point, because a lot of people, uh, a lot of subscribers and people, they're afraid to take lessons. Mm -hmm. They're like, I want to get better, but man, I don't want to start getting crowded up in my brain and, and take two steps backwards trying to go one step forward. Yeah, well, what, what I've learned from lessons, first of all, you shouldn't be taking lessons and then think it's going to take me six months to get better. Yeah. If that's the case, don't take the lesson. Right. And what lessons should be, where our industry has fallen apart, is we don't have any, we don't have any process. So what is the first concept that you need to understand and what are the skills that go along with it? Yep. Okay, it's concept number one. Can you do this? Do you understand this? Yes, I do. Next. Concept number two, skills that go along with that. Now, if all of a sudden you can't do that, yep. to go to concept number three, four, five, or six, it's not going to make you a better player. It's probably going to make you worse. Yep. Well, see, our industry, we don't have a definition of terms. Yep. So terms mean different things yep. based on different teachers. Mm -hmm. We don't have any formal, okay, step one, step two, step three. So my yeah. whole career has been around figuring out what those are. Yeah. So all of a sudden now it's pretty easy to find out where somebody is in their concepts and skill development, what they believe they're supposed to do. And once you correct a lot of those concepts, people get better really fast because a lot of yeah. them are fighting the natural forces that we're standing here right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And, and they're wondering why they don't get any better. Well, because you're in this constant fight, you're never going to be really consistent because you're not, you're not utilizing the things that are consistent on a daily basis. You're actually fighting them. All right, so if somebody was to say that, that didn't know you at all, let, imagine somebody, what would somebody else say? What is the Malaska method? Not you, but somebody else. What is the common idea of what people think you teach? And then what's the reality of what you teach? Well, I, I think they, they start to think that you're a no body, no rotation player. Yeah. And you're just trying to hit the ball with just the club in your hands and arms. Yeah. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Okay. Uh, I'm more, the club is, the face is the most important because the club face tells the ball what to do. How do we control the face? Then how does your body move to accommodate and help you with what you're trying to do with the club mm -hmm. and the face to be consistent? Yeah. It becomes a pretty simple process, but most people start thinking that you're anti-body. No, I want people to use their bodies, but based on what I've learned, yeah. based on what I've learned, it's about using their body the way it was designed to be used so that you don't hurt yourself like I did. Yep. Now, I understand exactly what happened to me. I know what happened to my swing. I know why it got complicated. I also know why I blew my lower back out in my neck, which I'm seeing it right now with a lot of things out there well intended that they are and it's not that they won't generate speed with it but what's happening to the timing that it takes how many balls you have to hit to make it good and the forces they're putting on their body it's extremely complex and it's you're going to break down they're going to get hurt yep we'll get more into that later let's get into your questions right now from instagram so go to instagram and that's how you can put questions in that will get read on future be better golf shows uh so i put up an instagram post that I was going to be seeing Mike. A lot of people were very excited about this interview that we're doing. So <laughs> let's uh, let's get into it. Okay, so 
Ali Mortazambi. There's going to be a lot of weird usernames we're using today. Okay, Ali. <laughs> yeah, he says, uh, please clarify your over the top from the inside idea. Okay. So I don't know this, and feel free to use me as a, an example. I, the thing that is the most insulting, worst thing you can say to a golfer is, oh, it's obvious, you're over the top. It hurts. Well, I, 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 really, I don't like that comment. Okay. So, well, you come on up here, and okay. I will, we'll use you. Okay. Oh, just We're going we're gonna to use this right. as the target line. So okay, we got gotcha, a ball gotcha. sitting there, but this is yeah. your target line. Uh -huh. Okay, what he just said, what Brandon just said about you're over the top, I mean, it's easy to see stuff like that. Yeah, right. But what's causing it? Exactly. Yeah. So if you don't get into the causes, and there's multiple causes of over the top, but when you hit a golf ball, almost everybody's done this. I'm sure you've all done this. You get up to a shot, you come what they call over the top, and you catch the ball on the face, and it, it just rockets. It feels so good, but you look up, and it's left to left out mm -hmm. of play. Yeah, feels. Feels great. The, yeah. the impact feels compressed, good. Compressed, yeah. The ball's compressed, okay. Yeah. So there's, there's only one thing that's really wrong with that over the top. Mm -hmm. Take a hold of it. Most people, when they come what they call over the top, they get here, and then their shoulders twist, and the club comes outside of the initial shaft plane yep. and it comes over the top this way. Okay. But that's a very strong feeling to feel this. Yeah. So over the top from the inside simply means you get up here. When you start down, your hands come down in here and the club is coming over the top of your hands. But uh. the club head is still coming from inside the target line. Yeah. So you want over the top from the inside. You don't want the club coming from the inside from behind your hands. I mean, right. you can do that. I spent my career with that one. Mm -hmm. And then you have to figure out how to catch uh, it up. Yeah, you better do something. Which is why yeah. your damn grip is so tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I take all of your hands. I'm learning a lot about your golf swing. Yeah, of course. Because you're having to over control what's going on. Mm -hmm. But over the top from the inside is the same over the top with the clubs mm -hmm. to some degree. But instead of it going out this way. Yeah. It's the handle's coming down in here, and the club's coming over the top from there. Gotcha. There's where the tour guys live. Gotcha. That's what they, when they call, get it out in front of them. Yes. They're yeah. coming over the top mm -hmm. from the inside. Yeah, the, a very terrible feeling in golf is uh, this happened to me. I was in the lead to uh, Long Beach City Championship, my flight anyway, the A flight. <laughs> uh, uh, so I was, I was in the lead after two days, three shot lead. And all of a sudden, I started feeling like my swing was very behind me yeah and yeah. i was having to do something and then the snaps came out and uh ended up in second place but lost my lead and stuff very very disappointing it's very hard to play from back here well you're you're at that point you're you're basically fighting momentum and you're making mm -hmm. momentum do things that are in one sense you might be able to create some speed from there yeah but the control through the ball and the pressure that that puts on your body and the timing becomes much, much more difficult. Okay, yeah. So it's not that you can't play from there. I had a yeah. decent career playing from there, feeling like I was what they call stuck yep. all the time. And just being a master manipulator. With my hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they actually told me stuck is a good feeling because the club's behind your hands and you don't want it to get out in front of you. Show us, uh, uh, hit one with that feeling, that over the top from the inside feeling. Okay, so all I'm doing is when I'm up here, Yeah. My hands are coming down, and mm -hmm. the club's coming over the top of my hands. Over the top of your hands. So it's coming outside my hands. So the club head is closer now to the target line than my mm -hmm. hands. Yep. But the club head is still coming into the ball from inside the target line. Okay, so what's a good drill? That's a feel. What's a good drill that I could do to get that feeling? One of the best drills you can do, set up, mm -hmm. if you split your grip, yeah. hockey grip, Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go up to the top and you're looking at that ball and yeah. you've got to put the club head on the ball, mm -hmm. see, your hands are going to come down in here because they have to for you to get the club out there. If yeah. your hands go or your straight body at the go ball. out here, yeah, forget it. you can't even get to the ball. No. So you don't hit the ball, but then feel what are your hands going to have to do? Mm -hmm. Where are they going to have to go? So they're going to have to come in here. There you go. So now your club, now if the club gets behind you, if it gets back here, yeah. and you do that, you can't even get to the ball. Let's try it. No, no. See, so you There's can't get nowhere. the club head on the ball. My, I'm going to hit your foot. Exactly, yeah. which is where most people, a lot of guys, play golf from. So because your hands are split, it makes you work the handle of the club down in where it's supposed to go and the club out. Okay, how do I translate that into a, 
into a, something I can use. All right. This is a lot of times with drills, I have a hard time. Like, I, I'm pretty good at doing the drill, but then. I'll show you first, and you do it. So you yes, stand here, yes. and you go, okay. So you get set up, and then you split your grip. Yep. And you're here, and now your hands are coming down, and the club's working out into the ball, and you're feeling that. Yep. Then you put your hands a little closer together, and you copy the same thing. Mm -hmm. and then you put your hands together and go, and just copy the feeling. Now, one of my subscribers, uh, uh, there was a drill that another instructor put on our channel, and he liked the drill. So he quit golf for two months, and all he did was this drill for two months. This is uh, unbelievably boring and almost like a form of torture that he put himself through. Yeah. So, But you're saying it shouldn't take super long. This uh -huh. is like, you know something that you might be able to start to get the feeling of pretty well, quick, quickly. Well, quick, and here's what you start to get the feel yeah. of set up here. And in my opinion, it's probably the most important part mm -hmm. of the golf string. What you're learning to do is direct and redirect momentum, yep. okay? So when you split your grip, all of a sudden, you start to feel what it feels like to direct the momentum of the club head out here. Mm -hmm. So you start to feel how the weight of the club head yep. is working out in front of you. Yep. And you can sense when it goes this way. Yes. So once you start to feel how to direct the momentum of the club head, mm -hmm. and then you put your hands together and you try to feel that same thing, and you start to feel how the weight of the club head is being directed so that it just drops into the ball and you're not having to do anything to do it. And then all you do is set up to the ball and do the same thing. Let's do it. It's nice and easy. So hands in, club out. So it's all right. I could feel it got a got little, little bit back. You do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the reason, you know, when I watch you move, you get the club face a little shut coming down. Mm -hmm. And your grip's really tight. You're, you've been used to having the club behind you. And so mm -hmm. shutting the face and trying to do this to catch the face up yeah. is typical of somebody who gets the weight of the club behind him. So hitting long irons or fairway woods off a downhill lie is difficult to do. Oh, yeah. Because you've yeah. got too much shaft lean. Yeah. And the face is too shut. So your club you're hitting there, whatever that is. Six, yeah. You're turning it into like a three or a four iron loft at the ball because you're leaning the shaft so far forward. Well, that's what I notice with the hockey drill. When I do, when I do this, it's a lot of shaft lean. You know, but so you, but see, now I... you're doing the drill wrong. Okay, gotcha. It's this way. You don't, you don't <laughs> put your hands in here. Okay. Gotcha. This doesn't go, the handle doesn't go over here. The handle yeah, goes right here. Uh, so you're about, about buckle. Right, you're right there. This doesn't get out here. That's not how oh, we're doing it. That's a different it. feeling. Okay. It's right here. Yep. It's right there. So I'm, you're lining the shit. There you go. It's funny. I can feel myself fighting you. You're probably happy. No, I don't know. Yeah. It's the reason my freaking forms are so big. <laughs> right. It's fighting people, people every are, day. Come on. No, they don't want to go doing. that way. All right. No, I, I think I, I got the feeling here. So. There you go. Yeah. There. That, that feels good. Now you're going to. Now you're that shallow. That was a lot better, huh? Well, yeah, you're shallower. Yeah. Okay, you're going to catch the face up, so now the ball's up in the air. Yeah. So you're way too, as, as most people. So that's a really good drill yeah. to start to feel how to get the club to work out in front. Now, if you take this, the hockey drill from here mm -hmm. and then you let it release up on the follow through, mm -hmm. so you let it just finish its arc, yep. you start to feel how to match the follow through with the downswing. And when you do that, you don't really have to put any conscious thought into what's no, going no, no. on here. No. Uh -huh. Hey guys, thanks for watching that. That was part one in a multi-part series. I think there's three parts to it. And uh, lots of interesting stuff that he went through. Mike was involved in this thing called the Source of Power, which a lot of you have heard about. It's really worth your time to check it out because Mike, in his part, talks about a way to swing with a lot of power and not have any pain while you do it. A type of... Uh, golf swing that he promotes that will not break your body down basically. It's really interesting in Mike's part of the source of power, which is four different instructors, all like-minded about how power is really created in the swing. It's really cool, you guys should check it out. So the link for it is in the description below. Subscribe to this channel. I'll talk to you later. Bye.